Hey you guys, so here is the finale to Weeping Angels, y'all. I'm sorry, it's been a long time since I've been recording, but it is what it is. So, we are starting off with Anthony running down to the warehouse, the abandoned warehouse, where his um, illegitimate son, Basil, is holding hostage the young woman that they kidnapped a couple of weeks ago, Peaches, and the twins, the 12-year-old twins, Rose and Jasmine. So he has advised Willet, Willow and Wynette, his wife, not to call the cops because he's going to try to find the twins himself. Now he has an inkling idea that the twins were down there. And so of course he gets down to the warehouse and Basil, Basil has taken his sisters and now he wants to rape them and kill them like they have done the other ones. So Anthony is looking at Basil. And he's basically saying, you don't have to do this. Um, they're too young. And so, Basil's like, exactly. That's what makes it even better. They're very young. So, you know what, Pops? I'm going to go back here and handle Peaches. And why don't you take care of the twins? Basil takes Peaches, who's, um, at this point, she he had kind of roughed her up. And she's resting on a dirty old mattress. He takes her and she's screaming and crying and pleading again to let them go. And the twins are uh, tied together, behind, their hands behind their backs, and Basil has tied them together. The father, Tony, gets down on his knees and he takes down, um, I believe, a, a headscarf or a blindfold or, excuse me, a bandana that Basil had used to tie them up. He releases the mouth on one of them, let's say it's, it's Rose. And Rose is like, Daddy, what's going on? Why is he saying that you... And so that's when Tony cuts her off. He said, it's okay, baby. Don't worry about it. I'm going to go ahead and release you guys. I need you to run straight home as fast as you can. As he's undoing their knots, you guys, Basil did a good job in tying them together. We're going to cut over to Willow, who is still sitting out front of the brownstone, looking back and forth. She's basically watching the street for her father return. That's when she could hear the young detective downstairs from Texas, Michael, come out of his apartment. And he's like, hey, Willow, what are you doing out here this late? And Willow's a little nervous because she knows her father, Tony, told her, do not call the cops. And technically, Mike, Michael, is a cop. So she's not sure she's, she should say anything. So she's like, well, nothing. I'm just out here, um, you know, just enjoying, enjoying the weather. And he looks around because it's not good weather. It's hot as hell. So he's like, you're enjoying this hot weather. And she's uneasy. Willow's not a great liar. She wears all her emotions on her face. So he could tell something is wrong. He's a detective too. So he goes up to Brownstone. He's like, Willow, what's wrong? I feel like you're, you're not telling me everything. You do know you can be honest with me and open. And she looks at him and she's like, it's my sisters. We came home. We were getting ready for dinner. We went to the bedroom and we saw that they weren't there. My father decided to go to the shop. They weren't there. And he told us to not call the cops. But I'm worried. I'm worried about my sisters and I'm worried about my daddy. That's when Michael looks at her and he's like, you know what, Willow? There's something I need to tell you. And she's like, yeah, what is it? She's looking at him kind of uneasy. And she's like, yeah, what's the problem? He said, look. We have a lead on who's been kidnapping and murdering these girls. And she's like, okay, who is it? And he's like, it's your father. And she steps back, almost falls back because she's on the stairs again. And she's shaking her head, her head. She's like, no, that can't be right. Again, this is her father. She can't believe what Michael's telling her. She's like, no, this can't be true. And Michael's going up the stairs. He's getting closer to her. He's like, yes, Willow, I'm so sorry, baby. I wanted to tell you sooner, but I didn't want it to get in the way. And I didn't want you thinking that the only reason why I was getting closer to you was to get closer to your father. And Willow looks at him and she's like, actually, that's, that's exactly what I think. You know what? I don't think you should be talking to me right now. He's like, well, what, I, what can I do to help? And she looks at him. She's like, you can leave me alone. That's what you can do to help. So Willow goes upstairs to the apartment. She goes into the apartment. Her mother sees her, um, her face and she's like, Willow, what's wrong? And Willow doesn't say anything. She goes to her room and starts crying. She's bawling, crying. Michael then goes downstairs and he goes into his apartment. He takes his gun because he's like, he already knows what's happening. So he starts going around. Cut to Tony. He's trying to release the twins, Rose and Jasmine. Again, Jasmine, excuse me, again, Basil. 
ratchet ass son has tied them, tied them together and mind you guys if you remember tony has a gun on him too he has his piece so he's ready for anything so he successfully unleashed them and here comes basil he came out his hands have blood on them you guys so he comes around and he's like what are you doing what the hell do you think you're doing dad and tony's like this is not right this is not right. I should have never involved you in this. There's something wrong with you, Bezo. I promise you, you know, let's just, you know, don't involve the girls. We can worry about peaches later on, but please don't involve my babies. And so Bezo looks at him and he's like, well, what about me? Ain't I, ain't I part of your family? What, wh why you always put them above me? And so Tony's like, it's not like that. You don't understand, but the girls, you know, they're babies. You can't do this to them. And so that's when Tony takes out his piece and he's like, I can't, I'm not gonna allow you. You can't do this. You, you, you can't do this. And so he aims the gun at Basil and tells the girls to run off and they run off. And Basil's screaming at them to come back, but they don't. He, they run off. And so the girls run off. Again, Michael's going through the neighborhood, right? He's going through the neighborhood. Cut to Basil and Tony. They're going back and forth. Basil's like, you don't understand. Like, this could be the perfect, perfect murder for us. And you don't want to do this. And Tony's like, I don't know what I, what I did wrong. I have no idea why. I'm so sorry. That's when he pulls the gun up to his head. Basil's like, what are you doing? What are you doing, Dad? And Tony then pulls the trigger, you guys. He pulls the trigger and kills himself. The twins are running at this point, and they pause and turn around. Jasmine's like, did you hear that? And Rose is like, yeah, but Daddy told She said, but what if Basil did? Jasmine is like, no, we got to go ahead and go home. They start running towards the house. That's when Michael sees the girls, and he gets them, and he's like, are you guys okay? They're like, yeah, but our dad, we heard. He said, yeah, I heard it. It's okay. I'm going to go ahead and you guys go ahead let me know where where did it come from so they point towards the direction of the empty warehouse you guys and so they kind of give him directions on where it's at okay so the twins get home safely um they knock on the door willow and Wynette. they hug them embrace them it's cool michael was making his way to the abandoned warehouse and he discovers tony on the ground and basil is next to him um basically trying to hold his father you know but it's too late he's already died so basil's looking at him and he's he looks up at um michael and he's like i don't know why he did it i don't know why he's like you know what um you need to put your hands behind your back we gotta take you down to the station so that at this point you can hear ambulance coming you can hear because Wynette was like screw this she went ahead and called the cops and of course Michael went ahead and called the cops while he was in his apartment um and you know went out to go find the twins himself so all right you guys we cut to a couple of days weeks later on the girls are absolutely devastated the family is devastated at their father and um, the brother BJ Basil of what has happened. These two, which is very rare to find um, ser serial killer pairs, but it, it, it happens. But anyway, um, these two started killing in their previous state. I can't even remember what state they were in. Um, of course, Anthony being the older has been killing for a while. He's been really good at it basil not so much he's a he's a bit sloppy and he wanted to get younger and younger the victims were all over the place so the cops were confused so of course they didn't know until the killings up in um what the family is at right now that it was actually two people at this point okay so they buried basil excuse me they buried tony hardly no one in the community came to the funeral but the family because they were disgusted that this man family man business owner in the community could do this to girls that he knew and having a family full of girls too um so basil ended up getting the death penalty and so he's serving on death row right now he has no regrets and he tells them everything that happened he's actually glad about it he's glad to be in the spotlight so he's very open about the murders that he did with his father the twins had to go through a lot of counseling, having to deal with the, um, you know, the pain of losing their father and, you know, being kidnapped by their crazy uh, stepbrother or brother, you know what I mean? Um, Michael and uh, Willow do end up falling in love. So 
the corner store remains open and willow takes over the ownership and she runs the store and she's very successful um the twins go off and they you know of course with their counseling why Nat is never the same she's she's you know absolutely heartbroken that her husband of 20 plus years was basically someone that she never knew it was a stranger this entire time this psychic comes downstairs uh you know from the, from upstairs excuse me um what are they the gold scenes so the psychic upstairs runs into willow one day at the corner store and willow hasn't seen her since the murders and since her father committed suicide so willow kind of avoids eye contact but you miss what is her name mrs goldberg mrs goldstein she comes up to willow and she's like so you understand what i saw and so willow looks there she's like yes yes ma'am i get it now you know, she's like, are you doing okay? Is your family well? She's like, and Willow looks at her. She's like, what do you think? No, we're not okay, but we will be with time. And so, all right, you guys, that's the end of the story. Weeping Angels. I know I, I'm so sorry. It's been forever. Um, but I just didn't know what, what direction I wanted to take this story. So that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. Bye.